There's no way they're going to understand their car better than Red Bull do next season. No, no, no. It's, it's, not, it's just not possible. But you could, you, that's, the, that's the problem I have, right? Because they're still running like a Frankenstein car. Like you yeah. can see from the, the, the way the side pods are and the jutty bits out yeah, where the, just bolt the mirrors are. Here and there. Yeah, yeah. because they, didn't, they need the side impact structure to be there, but also they've just had to kind of retrofit it because of the cost cap. And again, this is, uh, you know, people, uh, there's criticisms, valid criticisms around the cost cap, but I actually quite like the fact that you have to work with what you've got and you can't yeah. just spend your way out of a black hole because yeah, yeah. then that keeps, you know, that gives the, the smaller teams a chance to at least be, well, they're, the smaller teams are more competitive relative to, to the front than they've ever been, yeah, at least in qualifying. And it seems if they make a mistake, they pay for it rather than, well, paying for it rather than just spending their way out of the, out of the problem. That was good. Jeez. They pay for it in every sense. Yeah. Well, they could use, they used to, no. Well, yeah, they could, they, they used to pay it. for it, but now they pay for it. <clears throat> yeah. Either way, like, it's like Red Bull oh who is it is it Andy McCulloch I think he works for Red Bull I can't remember his name he's one of the senior um, guys at Red Bull and he was saying you know there was a quote and paraphrasing it's like we'd be silly to chuck this concept out the bin of course like we're gonna but we need to add pace we need to develop of course they do right they've barely upgraded their car they've got the fewest upgrades of any uh, team this year yeah the fewest number of upgrades Mental. which is that's scary. Alpha Terry have by far the most. Really? Yeah. And only now are they. Yeah. <laughs> this, that, always, that always concerns me as well, though. Mm. Because if you're still bringing massive upgrades, like two, two races yeah. at the end of the season, it's like, well, how much effort have you put into, or how much thought have you put into next year in comparison to other teams that yeah. aren't upgrading? Right I just now? think for too long they were just trying to do it themselves rather than just take what you get from Yeah. Well, they, like, just got, they got a suspension. Like the advantage. Like just Red Bull, didn't they? Just the rear end. Yeah, they've got the rear. But to be fair though, like for a, for a smaller team, it actually is worth upgrading until the end of the season because points are so much more valuable. Like Alpha Tari have just True. rocked up for the last two Grand Prix and just like slapped all the teams around them. If they get like decent points again in, in Vegas even just like an eighth place, they're like actually going to finish like seventh in the championship, having what? been bottom all year. And the difference between seventh and bottom is about $35 million. Exactly. That that would pay off Ricardo twice. Yeah. That would pay for seven of those Emperor tickets at the Vegas Grand Prix. Oh my God, that was mass. That's actually so depressing. <laughs> seven, only seven. <laughs> you could see uh, Adele seven know. times <laughs> or, or just make an entirely new, better Formula One car. No, you get a one in 47 chance of seeing Adele six times. <laughs> it's actually the trap. So you're just not seeing Adele either way. I just, oh, look, I, I think that, again, I think part of the issue, right? McLaren, McLaren, and even even to less of an ex to less of an extent as to mine but mclaren for sure mm. they have their like stella's talked about you know there's 50 percent of the upgrades that they want to bring that they can't with this chassis yeah. but fundamentally they're on the they're on the they're on the path yeah. mercedes are, are still not on that path yeah because yeah. they're still using the frankenstein car yeah so they've got to now develop the car to the new path and then understand it as much as you know mclaren have been using this you know b-spec car essentially since austria mm. with lando and red bull have had it for since the start of 2022 yeah yeah yeah, yeah literally i can't like i i also think you know mercedes are doing well this year right but we spent a lot of you know say we the, the community right and there was so much talk at the start of this year who's the strongest driver pairing in f1 and the amount of people who said lewis and george and understandably and perhaps rightfully so, right? Yeah, yeah. I would argue as a team pairing, no, but individual talent, I think there's a strong argument. I still don't have a problem with that argument. Yeah. Fair. And what, so are, are they not just covering up the misgivings by being so good? Like yeah. maybe they are actually driving, we'll never know. It's like the whole, you know, if you've got a backmarker car and you finish 14th, you could have had the greatest race of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And no one will know. Yeah. Maybe they, they are actually flattering this Mercedes and actually they're a lot further back because remember when Mercedes were dominating it wasn't because of their aero it was because their engine yeah it's 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 scary it's concerning really if you're, if you're a Mercedes fan I think for me the only way Mercedes or Ferrari as well I'm going to slap them in this category yeah chuck them in as well it, the only the way they're challenging the truth for them as well yeah the only way they're challenging Red Bull next season is, is if they accidentally discover something do you know what I'm saying like where they they're in the wind tunnel and they're going on a second run that backwards again <laughs> <laughs> 
Just and then just like by accident, someone's just switched it on the wrong way and just gone like, hold on a second. Just just, just just put Das on the car. Hey, yeah. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, Don't just, tell Joe Power. That would be... <laughs> I remember when that was a thing. That was sick. Did, did, did That's a great ban- little innovation. Love that. Did they ban it? They let them have it till the end of the year and, and then they... It. Fuming. That's, I, that's what F1 should be about. Innovation. If you... On, yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm, bring it back. If you can find a way to bend the rules even slightly and get mm. performance out of him here for it. That would have been yeah. perfect to a race like Vegas as well, having yeah, something like yeah. Das. Because that was all about heating up the tyres and getting him to the yeah, right operating exactly. window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would have been cooking. Yeah, um, that was cold. That was cold. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I don't have much faith in, in Mercedes, honestly. Again, just because, yeah, they're, they're not on that path. They don't fully understand their car now. They're not going to understand their car better than, than say, a Red Bull next season. I, I just think there's way more compelling arguments for... McLaren. Uh, certainly I, McLaren. I, I'm here for McLaren. I'm really here. I know the bias is coming through, but I'm really here for that. McLaren going toe toe with Red Bull next season would be delightful. <clears throat> and then slap just Ferrari and Mercedes turn up half the time as well, and we're, we're golden. Stella's cooking. Stella is cooking for Stella sure. Stella do be cooking. Um, well, outside of that, another thing I wanted to touch on um, a certain Braun documentary. Mm-hmm. And there's also there's a couple of things I want to talk about. There's Braun documentary, which is just come out mm-hmm. I believe um, I haven't watched it yet no, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll do a review we'll have, we'll, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to watch that and, and fully review but there's also the Netflix um, golf competition that's mm-hmm. going on tonight because this podcast is coming out today we're filming on the Tuesday today yep. I think it's like 11pm UK time nice. um, start with the Braun Dock mm-hmm. um, I was about to say oh you know um, I, was, I was about to use Drive to Survive as a documentary but I think that's a bit of a controversial way of uh, yeah. describing Drive to Survive. As entertainment. Um, what are your thoughts on the Braun story? Because I want to just start this off by saying, I don't think it's anywhere near as <sighs> magical as it's made out to be. Really? Do you not think? Because <clears throat> I, I, I think... The- Toyota, sorry, Honda spent millions and millions and millions on uh, developing yes. that car. Yeah. Ross Braun saved the team from going under. Yeah. But it's not like, you know, when Haas rocked up in 2016 mm. and were in the points like first race. Yeah. And they were using old bits from Marussia who were a bat marker. Yeah. Um, to me, that was more impressive mm. than Braun 2009. Like it's, it's a... Obviously, Ross came in and saved loads of people's jobs. Incredible, right? And kept the team going and managed to get sponsors in over the course of the year to bankroll it, but they couldn't upgrade the car. But like, it's not... I want to see the... I've not seen the doc, right? But but it's not... I I don't get that proper like... I don't know. I just feel like it's it's not fully like... So you know what it is? It's dramatized for me. It it probably is a little bit. I think the magic... I, I... Sell me the magic. To be honest, I didn't actually know that the, the, the Honda had put like quite that much money into like into developing the car. Oh yeah, they fully like yeah, yeah. sent it. Yeah, because I remember I remember people joking about it. Like if you just stayed, you would have you'd have just won the chance. Oh yeah, yeah, like, literally. It's so stupid. Um, but obviously, like I think some of the I think some of the magic again comes from the fact that the, the jobs were saved. They just wouldn't have been on the grid. Which I get that. Been for like one guy saving them, whatever. One one young Ross Braun. And I think also it's the it's the that season was mental and it just flipped completely upside down. You've got Ferrari and McLaren struggling at the back at the start of the season and throughout at times. And you've suddenly got Braun at the front. You've got the likes of Red Bull at the front who had been like perennial mid-table teams up until that point, realistically. And I think it, it's, the sto- it's the story of the whole season and also I think the drivers as well. You know, Jensen Button had never really had a chance mm. at winning a championship. He'd never been in a car that was worthy of winning multiple races, whatever. And suddenly he was able to actually uh, like show off his ability mm. in a car that could win things. And also, you know, I know they, they had the money at the start. They had a very good car, obviously, at the start of the season, but they weren't able to develop whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And it felt like, obviously, everyone else was catching them up as the season went on. So it did still have that vibe of like, okay, right, cool. The, the, the base product we have here is good, mm. but everything else we're fucking hobnobbing together. You know, we've probably not got the staff that we should have. We're not able to build parts to make the car better. Mm. You know, we're being chased down from behind. We've got two drivers who are getting towards the end of their careers. who have never really properly fought for a title because Rubens Barrichello was always just under Michael Schumacher's thumb. Mm. Um, and I think, I think that sort of coming together with, again, Ross Braun, 
saving the jobs of so many people, the fact that we'd have just completely lost a, um, a team that then even became Mercedes as well. Well, quite easily that car would never have realised its potential. Yeah, well, the team literally. would have just gone under. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, it would just, just never have made it onto the grid. So I think that's where, rather than like, oh yeah, the car, obviously the car was sick. Yeah. And obviously the car had loads of money pumped into it because it, it blew everyone out of the water at the start. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's more the magic of the overall season. Yeah, I get that. was saved and I'll get Jensen that. Button. But I, I think, I think, I guess, yeah, I think my issue is... is but you're right, yeah. I, it, it's I, not I, like a rags to riches story. No. Of like, they had £6.50 in the bank account and made like the greatest car of all time. Like, I, I, I see, I see almost like an attempt... I feel like I'm seeing an attempt to label this as like this brand new team. Yeah. But it's not a brand new team. No, it wasn't. The team was well established. It had been around Just for years. name and identity. Yeah, which happens like quite often. Mm. That would be like, you know, when Lawrence Stroll bought Ray, um, Force India, that was going to go under and yeah. he bought that and, you know, for discounted rate and whatever. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, look, don't get me wrong. Like I still remember that season well. Like that was, you know, I was, I would have been th 16. Yeah. To be fair, yeah. what it's worth as well, the Honda of the year before was fucking awful. Oh God, yeah. So it's still like- I fully a, tanked that season into the, into the mountain. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. It, it is still like a, oh, like a surprise in terms of like they managed to, you know, develop- what was a shocking car at the end of a regs change into a new regs change being like so dominant. It's like, I mean, what, what's the equivalent now? Yeah. What would be, well, the equivalent, obviously you've got the cost cap now, so it's not like you're going to just pump loads of money into it, but I guess it is the equivalent of like Williams or like Alfa Romeo just turning up next season and being like fucking insane. Yeah, yeah, I guess. In terms I, of like performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is. No, you're right. Like in, in, in terms of a jump, I mean, that kind of jump can only really happen in a new set of regulations, yeah, can't it? Yeah, of course, yeah. Because obviously like the Honda engineers had, you know, caught onto something mm. and were like, okay, like, and then obviously they turned up at like pre-season testing mm. and well, obviously this is after Ross Brawn had, had then saved the team and they were like a second and a half faster. So obviously they had their, you know, the, a double diffuser, which then everyone eventually kind of copied. Yeah. So you need that. Yeah, it would, it would, it requires that kind of innovation. It would have been like if, yeah, it would have been as if maybe a, I don't know, an Alpine like started 2022 as like by far the fastest car. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess yeah. that would be like an equivalent. Yeah. But then also it was yeah, called Gasly. Ryan Reynolds F1 team. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Facts. Dead because it'd been bought from from Renault. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That like. would be the most Renault thing ever, by the way. If they did actually, that, that they are like Honda now. <laughs> they are one million percent. Whenever they sell that team, it's going to win the championship the next. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. <laughs> and no one will ever buy an Alpine car for the road ever. In I like the A110, but they make one car. Make more. They keep teasing. Oh, we're going to make new cars soon. It's like when is soon? Like just give give them to us now. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, Alpine Palace stuff, by the way? No, I haven't. I like Palace as a, as a brand. I like Palace. I'm not convinced by the collection. All right. Well, I'll be I'll, honest. I'll, I'll have a gander. Yeah, there's a nice like blue t-shirt that's quite simple. Mm. Um, and they've got the capper in like pink and all that. But yeah, and those kind of, I'm not surprised Alpine are doing that kind of stuff because yeah. they've got all these celebrity endorsements and they're going to, you know, going to push the, push the hype stuff. But makes sense. Yeah. The, the, no, I'm, I'm interested in seeing the Broom Dock for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. We'll see. It'll be interesting to see how they paint the picture because I, I know from like the the uh, teasers I've seen, it's like, you know, you've got other team principal like Christian Horner's on there being like, oh, we didn't, we thought they were kind of maybe the word cheat gets thrown around a lot. Everyone's, it gets up, that actually pisses me off about F1. Like people always just like cheat, cheat, cheat. Like, oh, it's so bitter. The, the point is to, you got to go close to the sun. Everyone's yeah. going, everyone's got to try and take, and if you slightly overstep, you don't just go cheat, you know, well, yeah. like, it's not like in other like athletic sports where it's like, oh yeah, you're doing PE, you're, like so yeah, you're yeah. actually cheating. Yeah, exactly. It's not the same in Formula One. If you just come up with something innovative, you're not cheating, bruv. You're pushing the limits. Just, yeah, you're just pushing the limits or you just did something clever. Yeah. 